Paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. Britain is brimming with hoarders. Oh, look, another console. Every time I look at one part, I think, where do I start? Their collecting is catastrophic. You keep seeing stuff and you keep thinking, yeah, I'll go on. And they're drowning under clutter. Whoa! But help is at hand. Get rid of it for a bit of sanity. Collectibles expert Curtis Dowling will work out what is worth cashing in. And I could get between 60 and 100 pounds for you. Very happy. It's a pleasure. Marvellous. While Queens of Clean, Joanna Riley and Marianne Kamak will sort out what to keep and what to chuck. You can't even get in the door. The majority of the stuff is beautifully wrapped. It's been well taken care of. Clearing rooms for the first time in years. Guys, this is amazing. No one said it would be easy. Well, we're getting there, aren't we? So can our hoarders bear to part with their possessions? Can't send him to the skip, can you? And reclaim their homes for good. I'm keeping an eye on you, though, because ah. uh, there's some of them I like to keep. Today, we're with a former air stewardess whose globe-trotting past has left her with all manner of exotic curiosities. I've always had a sort of interest in things, and so I'll buy everything. But can our experts make us some dosh? Obviously, money's tight. Yeah, so definitely. if I could definitely make any money out of it, that would be the preferred option. Of course. While in West London, it's shoes, bags, clothes, and even more clothes. I just love a good bargain. <laughs> Nothing for me in here, unless one open a clothes and makeup shop. Leaving Curtis wondering where the cash will come from. Ah, oh, okay. Well, that isn't actually for sale. Ah. Today we're helping two ladies. Clothes hoarder Nikki from West London. I can't even remember what I've got because I've got so much stuff. But first, it's Julia from Surrey who lives in this two-bed cottage with her teenage daughter. Her nest has been well and truly feathered with knick-knacks collected from a former career as a long-haul air stewardess. Whether it be the fireplace, on top of the telly, it's just everywhere. There isn't a surface that it hasn't got something that I brought from abroad. While in the attic lurk the bulky remnants of short-lived hobbies like photography. Most of my hoard, I would say, is very organised, but up in the attic, I've got lots and lots of um, photographic equipment. Studio lights, there's backdrops, all sorts of tripods and stands. I haven't used it for absolutely years. And even camping. Eight-man tents, two-man tents, annexes, porches, seating, tables. But Julia has had enough. Don't let the neatly piled boxes fool you. There is such a thing as organised clutter. Julia has really struggled to break her emotional attachments to the many items she's gathered over the years. At the moment, I just feel like I'm surrounded by stuff from my past and, and I've got to look forward. And she's hopeful for what a difference decluttering could make to her everyday life. I just feel that it would make me feel that I wanted to come home. It would give me somewhere to relax. Um, whereas I just can't relax. It, I, it just feels so chaotic. But Julia is ready for change, and luckily our team are about to swoop in and help her get started. Here we are again. Nice house. Madam, knock away. Thank you, young man. Oh, am I glad you're here. Come on in. We're oh, going to show you the yeah. worst room first. Oh, OK. Right. Start at the deep end, Julia. Joanna runs her own cleaning company and is here to help out. Is no. this it? No, it's up the stairs, actually. I'll let you go and have a look first. All right. Let you gentlemen first. first. Yeah, Ooh, yeah. Oh, that makes a change. Before beauty. Oh, I love you. While Curtis has worked in the antiques trade for over two decades. Oh, there's a lot of stuff up here, that's for sure. So has a keen eye for items that might make money. 
Wow. Thank you very much. Christmas tree? There's always a Christmas tree. Old Faithful. Well, there's a lot of stuff for you in here, that's for sure. It's a hat. That's what it is. I feel like Bill and Ben. <laughs> I didn't realise it was panto season. Oh, yes, it is. I'm going to start around the other side and just okay. have a bit of a browse. Oh, there's got to be something in here for me, hasn't there? And Joanna finds just the thing. Curtis. What? Oh. Thank you for flying, Curtis Airlines. Please come again. <laughs> <laughs> Can you show me where the emergency exit is? They're here <laughs> and they're here. So I'll go that way. You go that, that way. exit. Yeah, if you could. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we now require your full attention as there is work to be getting on with. Having located the nearest exit, Joanna heads downstairs into the living room. It looks like there is a bit of work to be done here. Lots of books. There seems to be history books. I wonder if Julia wants to part with them or if she wants to keep them. Tons and tons of clothes. I like this part. I can get to try some of them on. Lots of toy games. wonder if they could go to charity. And these should definitely be on show. These are fantastic. In fact, if she doesn't want to keep them, my purse is in the car. Do a bit of a dust as well, so I need to have a chat with Julia. Fantastic things in Julia's living room. Them books are amazing, but there's a lot of dust. And boy, oh boy, I do not do dust. Still upstairs in the attic, Curtis is searching for some hidden treasures. Right, what do we have here? That's got to be something to do with a photographic studio, hasn't it? And a multi-system colour enlarger. Well, that's got to be worth a few pounds, hasn't it? Right. That's got to be something fabulous. Aha! Uh -huh. Well, that's got to come downstairs with me. I've managed to find this Pakistani rug upstairs in Julia's loft. Now, she bought it 10 years ago for about £250 in Pakistan. It's beautiful. She thinks it's silk. Personally, I think it's probably 90% wool. But these Pakistani rugs are handmade, mass-produced, but handmade, and they are still beautiful. And this one is in a lovely traditional style. I think there's a few pounds here. And downstairs, Julia has spotted something to show Curtis. Just had an interest in photography, wanted to take nice pictures of Maddie when she was born. Yeah. This is a small selection of what you've got, isn't it? Yeah, I've got a whole studio up in the attic. I mean, do you remember where you bought this? Um, a vintage um, sort of auction-y type thing. OK, yeah, I mean, this retro vintage stuff yeah. has got a big market now. Okay. People are going back okay. to using manual cameras yeah. instead of just digital cameras. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it's got its original case, its original yes. booklet. For some, Well, I was just about to say, for someone who collects, it's a great buy. I think that's amazing. Yeah. Brilliant condition as well, it isn't is, it? It is, yeah. And some fabulous lenses to go with it, uh -huh. too. Let's say 150 to 250, 10 to 15 pounds, could be 20, 30 pounds. So that little box of tricks there could be 300 quid. Wow. I'm chuffed, really. I didn't expect that at all. Well, let's get it first. OK. What are you going to do with this money, by the way? Um, I'd like to take my daughter to New York. Oh, wow. So, yeah. That'd be a great experience. Yeah. yeah. Curtis is snap-happy with his findings and pretty confident he can make some cash for Julia's trip to the Big Apple with daughter Maddie. Joanna's back up in the attic with Julia, surrounded by clutter, but organised clutter, apparently. So, Julia, we've all got attics, but mine has got nowhere near this amount of stuff. Yeah. How did it get like this? I think that it's mainly because I've just got the one child. Yes. And so it was really difficult to get rid of all the stuff as she went through the different ages and stuff because I didn't have another child to give it all to. OK. And so it was important that I kept it to make sure it went to somewhere that would appreciate it to other kids rather than just giving it away and not caring about it. Yeah. Because, you know, it's a part of, of, of just being a mum, I suppose. Sure, really. definitely. Yeah. You know, obviously money's tight. Yeah, so definitely. if I could definitely make any money out of it, that would be the preferred option. Of course. Talk me through these bag of clothes. Um, they're all stuff that I've sorted out. Yes. Um, so it's all sort of good quality stuff. OK. Joanna is helping Julia decide what to keep and what to get rid of. The next step is to start clearing out, while Curtis has a different challenge. He's downstairs and on the lookout for items to sell, and Julia has something she hopes will bring music to his ears. My dad gave me this. Um, he 
I think he acquired it from um, a school that he worked at and they were just chucking stuff away. Oh, so it's a freebie. The only reason that I brought it to your attention, really, was because when I had it restrung for Maddie to take to school, um, the lady in the shop said it was a very nice violin. Yes. I don't know what she meant by that. Well, it's in good condition. Is it old? I'm going to say this, at the best guess, is probably going to be... 70, 80 years old. Okay. So it's got wow. a little bit of age. Okay. So if I said I could get you a minimum of sort of 20 odd 30 quid. That's fine. Yeah, absolutely. It's not doing anything here, so. It might as well go to someone who's going to love it. Absolutely, yeah. Sometimes you walk into a house and there doesn't seem to be an awful lot, but it doesn't mean there isn't some really valuable items. And in this house, that's what we found. You look around and that first sweep you think, hmm, there's not a lot here. But all of a sudden you start finding some really choice pieces. Doesn't mean it's going to net you that Caribbean cruise or a brand new Bentley, but what it is going to get you is a little chunk of money that you didn't know you were going to have. So Curtis is taking away a handmade Pakistani rug, a violin and a selection of cameras which he hopes will contribute to that trip to New York for Julia and her daughter. Do you know what? I'm doing really well. We've got some really nice items, not a lot of them, but the items we have got are really really good quality. I'm not saying it's a fortune, but there's going to be a few pounds here. I can feel it. How about you? I'm having a fantastic day spending some time with the girls. What a lovely mother and daughter. Got some quality things. In fact, I've got my eye on a few things, so I might get off and get them now. I better get selling. Good luck. You too. Bye-bye. And quick as a flash, interest is sparked in Julia's photography kit and Curtis is in Plymouth to deliver it. Now, John bought this camera online. I just hope he's into giving them money. And it makes John in. I'm afraid you just missed him. Is this camera? Yes. Ah, £170. Brilliant. It is. Thanks, mate. No problem. Well, that was easy. I'm smiling, but the bad news is John wasn't in. But the good news was he left me £170 for that camera. Job done. It's not just Julia who's made a hoarder SOS to our experts. In West London, legal executive Nikki lives in this two-bedroomed house with her husband Darren and their four cats. From the outside, nothing appears amiss, but within these walls, Nikki has a very particular problem. My biggest thing is clothes, shoes and handbags. And she just can't stop buying them. I just love a good bargain. I can't even remember what I've got because I've got so much stuff. I haven't been in this wardrobe for probably about four years. But this is a problem that goes back a few more years than that. When I was uh, growing up, we didn't really have much as children. And when I first got my paper round and Saturday job and I had money in my pocket, I think that was the first, you know, I could actually go and buy stuff for myself. And then, of course, as I've got older, nothing sort of changed. But, you know, I'm not getting any younger and I just, I just want to change. Things really have got to breaking point, but Nikki knows it and she's ready to do something about her mountains of mess. I'm going to have to be ruthless and I've really got to have a sort out. Curtis has come to the rescue. He's on the lookout for items to cash in on. What have we got to look at? Well, there's a couple of bracelets here. OK, well, let's have a little look and see what we can see. I can't find a hallmark on this. It's very light. Yeah, okay. And sometimes weight will give away the fact something right. is gold or not because okay. gold's actually quite a heavy yeah, thing, yeah, you know. Yeah, no, I understand. Um, it's not going to have a huge value. Curtis suspects this bracelet is made from another base metal such as copper or silver, then covered in a thin layer of gold plating which can be rubbed off over time. And what about the second bracelet? Uh, yes, it certainly does feel like gold and it's got that little bit of extra weight to it. Right, so we've got two bracelets. Now, I have seen this Singer sewing machine that I want to take away. Ah, oh, OK. Well, that isn't actually for sale. Ah, why? It's actually, that was actually my nan's. Fabulous. So, yeah, I want to keep that. It's priceless. One thing I really love is that Singer sewing machine, but she won't sell it. It was her grandmother's and she uses it. So that's not coming with me. So I'm really going to have to look hard to find something to take away here. Still to come, a pleasing find for Curtis. My husband bought this at a jumble sale when he was Isn't quite a few years that ago. Lovely. And Julia's hoping to swap the great outdoors for some luxury. 
I think I'm old enough now to sit on a plane in a five-star hotel. Good for you, yeah. my kind of girl. Yeah. In Surrey, Joanna is helping former air stewardess Julia declutter in the living room and attic. Ten years' worth of piling it up. Wow. And in West London, Curtis is searching for items to flog amongst Nicky's heaps and heaps of clothes. Yes, it certainly does feel like gold. Curtis is off upstairs to see if he can hunt down another gem to sell. Breathe in, Curtis. It's a bit of a tight squeeze in here. <sighs> wow, that's a lot of clothes. And lots of makeup. I think for me in here. Unless one open a clothes and makeup shop, of course. Couture by Curtis. It's certainly got a ring to it. I think I'll stick to my day job. Right, best carry on hunting. If I can get out. Not having much luck upstairs, he heads back to the living room. Intriguing little box. Yes. Um, my husband bought this at a jumble sale when he was Isn't quite a few years that ago. Isn't lovely? A shaving kit. And I think he paid about 10p for that. It's even got the blades in it as well. And that's lovely. Look, it's, that must have been a very, very expensive purchase in its day, mustn't it? Mm -hmm. And it's in a fabulous box, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Didn't he do well for 10 pence? He did, yeah. I think something like this could surprise us mm -hmm. if it, when it sells, because the box is great. Mm -hmm. What a great gift. Back in Surrey, Joanna and Julia continue their clear out in the attic. Let's have a look what you've got here. Very organised. Yeah, the whole thing is camping gear. Do you so... really need this much stuff? No. And do you still camp? No, my car's not big enough now. So pretty much everything on here. Yeah. Looking at the pots and pans, yeah. they could go to charity. Absolutely, yeah. But the the more expensive the pieces could stuff be sold, can as, sold yeah, as, as a, a job, job lot. lot. Absolutely, yeah. That makes my job really easy. Good. Will you no. miss camping? Nah. I think I'm old enough now to sit on a plane in a five star hotel. Good for you. Yeah. My kind of girl. Yeah. <laughs> so all this is camping gear. Yeah. No time like the present. No. Let's get it shifted. Okay. Together, they've made great progress, but Joanna is now leaving Julia with instructions to carry on clearing and to put an end to those attic shelves groaning under the weight of so many boxes and bags. Back in London, Curtis is still sniffing around, looking for more items that might net Nicky some cash. It's obviously brass. It's not probably the most valuable thing in the whole no. wide world. And if you get some money, what are you going to do with it? Um, I might treat myself to a weekend away somewhere. Somewhere? France or somewhere like that. Oh, I'll get you. OK, right, so I've got that dog to take with me as well. OK. I've really looked around here. I've really got my work cut out. There are clothes everywhere and bags everywhere. Antiques, art, things that can actually make some money, there's not that much. Joanna has now arrived and is testing the water to see just how far Nikki is willing to declutter the living room. What are we going to do here? Are we going to be getting rid of a lot of this stuff here, Nikki? I need to actually organise myself. Yes. If, if I have a rummage upstairs and sort out some of my closets yeah. and the stuff that's under the bed, then a lot of this can be boxed up into storage boxes and okay. actually tucked away, out of the way. Time to get tough, Joanna. Don't buy any more stuff because <laughs> you, you home, it's bursting at the seams. I know, it is. And when you come into this room, you just want to be able to sit down, put the telly on and relax. I know. This would drive me nuts. Today's about being positive. Let's decide what we're going to keep, get rid of and give to charity. Nikki really has amassed all manner of strange objects. What is this? Well, that's what they call a foam roller, okay. and it's basically for rolling out sore muscles after you've done exercise. One of my favourites. That's a metal detector. I think we actually need to use this <laughs> to see if we can find any <laughs> under all this. Any more treasure? That's lavender, cos I was going to make some of those, like, little lavender hearts. Oh, that smells lovely. Yeah, no. <laughs> Joanna and Nikki are making a dent in her living room hoard, but they still have to tackle the bedroom and suss out if there are clothes in there that can sell. Curtis is now heading off with two bracelets, an antique shaving kit, 
and the dog ornament, hoping he can make Nicky some decent cash. How are you getting on? Difficult one. OK. There's not enough to make a fortune. There's just bits. I'm just going to struggle to make them good money. But I'll do my best. How about you? You always do. Thank you. I've got a hard job today. Nicky has got a lot of clothes, and when I mean a lot of clothes, you literally cannot get into the bedroom. There's clothes stacked up on the door. She's emotionally attached to these clothes. We've made a little start, but I've got a long way to go with Nicky. Well, I have to say, it's all about you today. Thanks. It always is. So while Joanna stays to help Nicky, Curtis heads to South London with her two bracelets. So I'm in Croydon Market to see a jeweler called Steve. Now, he might be very interested in Nicky's gold. Keep your fingers crossed. Steve, I've got a couple of bits of gold here that you might be interested. Now, I had a quick look at them when I was in the lady's house. Bit of 14 carat there. And I don't know what that is, actually, because I couldn't find a hallmark on it. OK, I'll have a look for you. Yeah, this is 14 carat. OK. Hallmark 585. Yeah, and what you got there? I couldn't find a hallmark. This one... I would imagine it would need to be tested if it's not hallmarked, but it, but it does look like 14 carat. Yeah, OK. Um, the stones, I can test the stones, but they, they're they not diamonds, to be no. honest with you. Yep. Um, and there's no value in them. There's, there's no value in the stones. So, so it's just the value in the gold. It's going to be the, the weight of the gold value, yeah. The price of gold fluctuates on the global market. The highest price it has commanded in recent years is $1,900 for one ounce. So, you're interested? Yes. Yes, okay. I'll, I'll be interested to, to purchase them for the gold price, of course. Well, let's have a look what the gold price is. Okay. 8.2 grams there. Today's price, I'm going to be £145 for that bracelet. Gold is doing well. It is. You can say that again. One down, one to go. Unfortunately, this one isn't gold. Right. I've just put the acid test on there. Yep. And it's gone green. So which, it's not uh, gold. Indicates it's not gold, unfortunately. So it's got very little value. Yes. Okay. So that one's coming home with me. That one we've agreed on at one four five. Not bad. That's still a good day's work by anyone's standards. Fourteen karat gold, one hundred and forty-five pounds. That's a cracking price. But he didn't buy the other one. It's not real gold. So there's a lesson learned there. If you think you've got gold. Check first. Still to come, Joanna gets ruthless. When was the last time you did look in that wardrobe? Four years. I'd say you could get rid of all of it. And in Surrey, help has arrived for former air stewardess Julia. I'm just going to drop this. Oh, brilliant. In West London, Curtis is trying to sell things to top up a holiday fund for Nikki. And if you get some money, what are you going to do with it? Um, I might treat myself to a weekend away somewhere. Somewhere? France or somewhere like that. Oh, get you. OK. And in Surrey, Joanna made a breakthrough and convinced Julia to not carry on camping. So all this is camping gear? Yeah. No time like the present? No. Let's get it shifted. OK. Our former air stewardess is ready for declutter takeoff, but she's facing a slight delay. I don't really know where to start with this, but I've got, to, I've got to start somewhere, so I'll start with the books. Well, that's as good a place as any. I mean, some of this stuff, I mean, this is when I was a teenager. I mean, this is just ridiculous. It's just got to go. I haven't even... I've just moved them from house to house. Not read half of them. I've got time to... Read. I wish I had. Right, that's one bag. Julia's off to a great start. I've got three cat beds here for our cat Peanut. I would say the only one that she's going to keep is this sort of cat sofa, so we'll keep that, but just get rid of those, I think. I don't even want to touch that. Yeah, I need Joanna here. Where is she? Bring back Joanna. I got this out of a skip. I thought it would be a good waterproof bag to keep my waterproof bag in. How logical is that? These are boxes that have been hanging around six months that I've been supposed to be decluttering with. 
and I have just moved them from room to room when I need the space. And so the things that are supposed to be helping me declutter have become clutter themselves. Boarding boxes they might come in useful to put stuff in. Hoarding boxes to keep your hoard in. Now that's a first. I just feel like I'm making more mess. That's, that's not making me feel good. And just at the right time, daughter Maddie steps in to lend a hand. Right, this is my yoga mat. You can see how often I've used this. You used that for like a month. I didn't. I used it more than that. And I would. It's just the time that I need, and I will get back into it. So I want to keep that and that. I'll end up buying it all over again if I sell it. So I want to keep it. Put it in the cupboard under the stairs, please. Together, Julia and Maddie are really making headway in the living room, and they've identified several items to keep and to clear. Curtis has already offloaded Julia's camera for £170, and he sold her violin, which was listed online and made a further £20. And now he's in Plymouth, hoping to find a buyer for Julia's Pakistani rug to trump an offer of £225 he's already had. So I've got Julia's rug here now. She paid two fifty for this in Lahore ten years ago, and I've come to see Andy. What he doesn't know about rugs isn't worth knowing. Hi, Andy. Nice to meet you. Thanks for seeing me. Pleasure. Lady bought this in Lahore about ten years ago. She used to be uh, an air hostess. Okay. Paid two fifty for it. Wants yeah. to sell it now. There it is. What do you think? Well, it's a very beautiful piece. Isn't it beautiful? I'd say it's a hunting rug, hunting design. Yep. Comes from the uh, Persian rugs to start with. It uh, looks like a silk to me. Could be a silk mixer or artificial. Without testing Ooh. it fully, you wouldn't know, OK? That can affect uh, the price? Yes. Yeah, if it was a silk, you could be looking at anything up to 600. Let's have a look at the knock count on the back. So you look in here, what you would do, you'd square inch there, times that by that, and that would give you, I would guesstimate, somewhere about 3, 325 to 350. OK. So a fairly decent, decent quality. She'd like to get her money back for it. For me personally, as a retailer, yep. obviously I've got to make a margin on it, so it'd be difficult for me to give £250 for it. Of course. Either way. Now, I would give you around about £200. OK, well, thank you for your advice. That's a pleasure. It's been very useful. I shall report back. Thank you very much. Looks like that ship has sailed. But no sooner has Curtis left the shop and he gets a call. Hello? Hi, Curtis. It's Andy from earlier at the rug shop. Hello, Andy. We'd like to make you an offer. Well, don't forget, Andy, I've got an offer of 225 on it already. Well, I would like to come in at 230 if that's at all possible. For two reasons, I'd be delighted. One, because I want you to have it, because you've got a rug shop. But also, it's another fiver for the lady. So that would be fantastic. Back in West London with today's other hoarder, clothes collector Nikki shows Joanna her second room of clutter. Is this your spare bedroom? No, this is actually my bedroom. Yes. There's just nowhere to get changed. No, I tend to be on the landing. You can't even get to your clothes, Nikki. I know. You know. Well, <laughs> it, just, it just goes on. I know, I know. I could open a clothes shop, couldn't I? Never mind one clothes shop. Nikki could probably open her own chain of clothing stores. Let's make a small dent in this. Right. Let's declutter some of these items. You can decide what you want to keep or get rid of okay. or give to charity. All right. I'm expecting the give to charity pile to be extremely high. <laughs> when was the last time you did look in that wardrobe? Honestly, probably about four years. Four years? Nikki, if you haven't looked in this wardrobe for four years, I'd say you could get rid of all of it. Four years is pretty impressive, but as a rule of thumb, if you haven't worn something for at least six months, it's time to get rid of it. Clothes will still have some value, even four years on, and they'll certainly be worth more than the nothing they're earning stuck inside a wardrobe. Charity. OK. I mean, that's still got labels on. Well, I don't want you to feel nervous. I want you to feel happy about doing this. I, uh, I know I've got to do it. That one for charity. You're doing well, Nikki. I'm liking your speed <laughs> and your style. <laughs> just think about the space, just to get access to your bed and to be able to move around the room. It's just got mad. Nikki's charity shop pile is growing higher and higher. You've made your decisions. This wardrobe will be empty. Yeah. 
These items will go into the wardrobe yeah. and you'll be able to get into your bedroom. I know, I know, which will be good. We're we'll spoiling you. And, and I'll be able to shut the door as well. <laughs> I didn't even know you had a door. <laughs> right, let's move on. OK. Joanna is helping Nikki see the light. Decisions are being made and piles of clothes are being cleared to give away or sell. Joanna is now about to leave, so it's up to Nikki to keep up the good work. It is bad. I think that Nikki is finally facing facts that something needs to be done here. We need to create space for Nikki so she can live happy in her home and she'll have the space to do the things that she loves to do. In Rutland, Curtis is about to see a man about a dog. So I've got Nikki's little Dachshund here. Now, it's quite nice and it's well made, but it's not a fortune. I promised her I'd get her maybe 10 or 15 pounds, and I think that's realistic. But to be honest, I need to see what Mark thinks. Mark, I'd like you to take a look at that, if you could. Now, the lady that owns it paid pennies for it, but she thinks it's worth a little bit more than it is. I did say to her, I can't find anything special about it. So she's put a reserve on it, which I think is a bit unrealistic, but I did say I'd do the best for her. So, first of all, I'd like your opinion. Yeah, sure. OK. <clears throat> Cast bronze. And I was hoping that was a maker's mark, but it's not. That's just German for copyright. What's the reserve on it? £50. Pounds. £50. Pounds. Mm, I'm afraid so. I wouldn't even be able to get £50 pounds at retail for this. <laughs> That's what I think. That's way over the That's top, what I'm I afraid. Thought. Yeah, best on this, I would be saying 10, 15 pounds. I think maybe it's best it goes back to her because maybe the truth is she doesn't want to sell it. I think, yes, I'm in agreement with you there. I didn't manage to sell Nikki's dog. 50 pounds, that's what she wanted for it. I think that was a little bit too much. And luckily, I had Mark tell me exactly the same. In the open market, he probably wouldn't even get that retail. So it's going back to her. And to be honest, I think she'd be quite pleased with that. Back in Surrey, having cleared the living room of books and all sorts of dusty odds and ends, Julia is ready to take on the attic, which is packed to the rafters. Oh, my God, I don't know where to start up here. This is ridiculous. There's nowhere even to stand to start decluttering. Now, this is all clothes that I've saved that are good quality clothes, um, and so I'm going to sell those probably online i think that's charity i need to sort of start making some piles that's not such a bad idea just what every girl needs a bag full of coat hangers rubbish 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 uh, brilliant i can sell these these are not even used brand new rollerblades luckily reinforcements have once again arrived Mum, it's me. Do you need any help? Just come halfway up and I'll um, just pass some of this down. I mean, look, we don't need that. There's a lid for that somewhere. Can you take that? Mother and daughter working together in perfect harmony. I'm just going to drop this. Oh, brilliant. Well, almost. So, how's it got like this, then? Because I've kept stuff that is yours to remind me of you. <laughs> Oh, thanks, yeah. yeah. <laughs> After a long day of decluttering, Julia and Maddie packed up 12 bags of rubbish, 18 bags for charity, and one bag of items to sell, along with a couple of larger items. Wow. Brilliant. It's gone. Oh, my God, I'm really happy with that. Having this massive clear out is so much easier and it creates so much more space for things because at the moment we just feel like we're just surrounded by so much stuff that we don't even need. What happens now is that um, I get rid of the dust because I feel, I feel like I've got Joanna's voice in my head. I didn't realise how much stuff I'd kept. It's obviously brought all lots of sort of memories back so I've got still tons, um, I've got a long way to go really. I've still got to sell it all but now I can see it and get to it. I can now get it out and photograph it and hopefully sell it online or car boot it or something like that. Hey, well done. Bye. Over the next few days, Julia continues to declutter with the help of daughter Maddie. And they are now making the final touches before Joanna returns. 
I think Joanna would be really, really pleased. I think she'll be so shocked to see it. I mean, you can actually see the shelves. Um, and um, and I think that she'll be expecting a little bit less dust than she saw before. Back at Julia's. I can't wait to see what she's done. Let me in. Hi. I'm back again. How are you? Coming in. Fine, thanks. How are you? Can't wait to see what you've done. Julia's living room used to be littered with odds and ends she'd picked up from her travels around the world as an air stewardess, along with piles and piles of books. But now the room has been transformed. It's now spacious with clean, shiny surfaces. What room's this one? The cluttered room. <laughs> what? Can you believe it? Fantastic job. I know. It's How so lovely! It looks you bigger. Can sit down. I know it looks bigger, just not so much stuff. I'm impressed. I know. So I've got to set it up. <laughs> sit down. <laughs> What's it like to be able to sit down? Oh, it's lovely. Sexy. It's lovely. Put the kettle on, love. <laughs> and the attic was rammed full of keepsakes from her daughter's childhood and a large amount of camping equipment which she no longer used. And now it's looking a lot clearer. The junk has been removed and the shelves clearly organised with items to keep and items still to be sold. You've got space. I know. This is great stuff. You can actually see to the other side. Yeah. Yeah. You couldn't can... actually walk round before. No. no, and we can, we can. We've got floor space. Ooh. We've got to keep Look, some we'll stuff. Look, we'll keep that pride of place. Yeah. Just let that have the whole shelf. <laughs> yeah. You've done well, you've decluttered, you've got rid of stuff. There was just piles and it was just everywhere. Yeah. Julia and Maddie have removed over 20 bags of clutter from the house, freeing up that space they have been craving. A fantastic achievement. So you've still got a little bit to go in the attic, uh -huh. but I'm pleased to hear that you're selling things. I am, yeah, it's all online, ready to go. So you'll earn some cash with that? Yeah, brilliant, hopefully. Talking about cash, mm -hmm. would you like to know how much we've raised for you? Yeah. It's a grand total of £420. Oh, my God, really? Happy with that? Oh, my God. Curtis sold Julia's camera for £170, her violin for £20 and the beautiful Pakistani rug for £230. Three items which had been sitting around and gathering dust and all it took was a good bit of tidying to net her a tidy profit. Was it worth it in well, the end? Absolutely. I mean, I, I'm still a bit gobsmacked, really, at that, at that money. OK. I really, really will be honest about that. But what you've given me back is, is my, my, my house, really. Do you know what I mean? I just feel like I wanted a move. It was that getting that really? bad. I felt the walls were closing in on me. But now... I can move around, it feels bright and breezy and, you know, just got a bit of room back, really. I feel like we've just moved in again, so it's really <laughs> exciting. You know, Maddie has been a huge influence on her mum to declutter their home and, as a reward, Julia's taken Maddie to... New York City, the Big Apple, home of shopping. Let's hope Julia doesn't bring back any more stuff. Still to come... In West London, left to her own devices, can Nikki cope with the task ahead? You have to be ruthless. But she needs to put words into action as Joanna has high expectations. I can't wait to see what she's doing with that bedroom. Do you remember all those clothes? In West London, Nikki is learning to make brutal cuts when it comes to clothing. That one for charity. You're doing well, Nikki. I'm liking your speed <laughs> and your style. <laughs> Curtis has taken away jewellery and her dog ornament and is back at the antique centre in Rutland hoping to sell Nicky's vintage shaving kit. I think this is a thing of beauty. What do you think? I like it. I like the velvet lining all being intact, but I also like we've got all the necessary parts together. The fact that we've still got the blades I know. individually wrapped with the correct, and that's the most important part, the correct piece of paper around it. Yeah. So, what's your thoughts on price? Well, I'll be very straight with you. Yeah. I've not had a really good one like this for some time. OK. I'd be happy to pay 20 quid, and I'd make a profit on that still. Well, you must have been there when I had a conversation with Nikki in the house, because that's exactly what I said I wanted for it. £20? Sold. Job done? Sold, sir. 
Well, that lovely razor set of Nicky's has sold, 20 pounds. That's a good price. And to be honest, they've had it an awful long time, so there was no massive expectations. 20 pounds back to her? Well, it's all for the pot, isn't it? Well, the pot may be filling up, but Nicky's bedroom still needs emptying. Oh, today's the day. I'm going to have to have a bit of a clear out. You have to be ruthless. Where do I start? Well, that's a good question. I'm not quite sure where to stick these. In a box or on a bookshelf, perhaps? Some of these I don't even think I've actually worn. I had a habit of buying lots of stuff. If I found something I really liked, I'd end up buying it in different colours. <laughs> Charity. Nikki is on a roll. Still got the label on it. It's like therapy, this is. <laughs> all right, this lot's all going to the charity shop. Nikki has packed up five bags for charity, four bags of clothes for selling, one bag of rubbish, plus the items Curtis has taken away to sell. Does that look like it's made any difference? <laughs> Not yet, Nikki, but keep at it. Gradually, the clothes are getting sorted and bagged up. And we've put Nikki in touch with a trader who will list her sellable clothing for her online. So hopefully a few more pennies will be coming her way soon. I'm absolutely exhausted, but I think I've made a bit of a, an improvement and I think I've turned the corner. Still quite a lot to do, but I think that's work in progress. Had I not done this exercise, I don't know where I would have been in another year's time. It could be up to the ceiling if I'd continued the way it was going. Hopefully, you know, somebody else will benefit from uh, my generosity with all those brand new clothes that I'm never going to wear. <laughs> Over the next six weeks, Nikki cracks on with a colossal clear out. She's got one or two last minute chores to do before Joanna arrives. Still got a fair bit to do, but I'm hoping Joanne's going to be pleased because I haven't bought any more clothes. I'm back at Nikki's. I can't wait to see what she's doing with that bedroom. Do you remember all those clothes? Hey! Come on in. <laughs> Lead the way. Nikki's living room was chock full of all sorts of objects that she just couldn't bring herself to get rid of. And now. The bags and boxes have been removed, creating a clear and relaxing living space. Come on in. What room's this? <laughs> this is my front room. <laughs> wow. I know, it's just a bit tidier. I, I didn't know. know you had that. <laughs> An armchair, yes. <laughs> have you used it? Uh, yes, it's been well sat in. <laughs> What's it like to have your living room back? Well, I've got enough to swing a cat, put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> That's now my craft corner, so now that I've got a proper shelving unit and I can actually... It's all in there, tucked away, I know exactly where everything is. Is it organised? Yes. Well done. Nikki's bedroom was bursting at the seams with clothes and shoes that she'd been amassing for years. Unable to pass on a bargain, she just kept topping up her wardrobe and the piles on the floor. And now... The bedroom is looking so much tidier. You have got a bedroom. And you notice you can actually get through the door just about. You're showing off now, aren't you? <laughs> Nikki, I'm amazed. I know, it looks so different in here, doesn't it? It's great. You can actually walk around the bed. You've got a walkway. You can literally walk everywhere. I know. How have you got on with clearing your wardrobe? Um. That that one's actually been cleared. Yes. Um, but that one on that side, I still actually that's still to be done. The door, I was literally at six and seven trying to get. I know. I don't think you wanted me to come in last time, but now no, the is, door's wide I mean, open. it still it still needs a bit more sorting out. It's ongoing. I mean, you've certainly got me on the bug, and uh, oh, I'm just going to carry on and continue. So. And the big question: Have you been buying any clothes? Nope. And I ain't going to buy any more clothes. The motto is, yes. is if you're going to buy something, you've got to come home and you've got to chuck something away. Oh, I like it. Yeah. But how much cash did her clutter make? There's a grand <laughs> total of £165. Wow, OK. <laughs> how do you feel about that? Well, I'm very pleased. Um, I wasn't expecting that. And um, to be honest with you, I think 
no money really can sort of like take over the fact that I've actually got my spaces back. So I'll keep the money then. And... No, no, no. <laughs> Curtis sold one of Nikki's gold bracelets and the vintage shaving kit to reach that total. Enjoy your money. Thank you. But more importantly, enjoy your home. Thank you. <laughs> Start buying clothes. <laughs> yeah. It was quite daunting. I'm pleased I've actually got it done and got my spaces back. I can now see the light at the end of the tunnel. You know what? We've not raised enough money to send Nikki on a world cruise, but she's got her space back, and that does mean the world to her. I just hope the money that we have raised her, she doesn't go out and buy clothes or coat hangers. <laughs>